little elf. Like busy little elves. We're going to make elves today. Awesome. Yes. And we are filming this in preparation for Fiber Fairy Friday, which is August 23rd of 2019. So there's no supply pack today. <laughs> <laughs> but we will have a supply pack and I'm actually going to work from the supply pack but what's so cool about these is they're fast they're easy they're super cute and they can use any coordinating core wool and top coat color that you like um, and I've pulled out some like our Santa bats are perfect for it tons of the top coat colors I'm enjoying kind of the more bright kind of off colors but you could definitely do traditional red and green um, but they look cute and orange and kiwi and blue pink anything anything goes. anything goes so we're calling this this is a level one i'm going to be um, very thorough in my explanation so if you're a beginner needle felter this is a great project for you and um i'd say you know when you're just starting this might take about an hour or so, but for the seasoned felters, these are a quick, you know, 20 to 30 minute project. So it's really fun. And like I said, limitless colors. You could get bells. We're including some yarn in the, um, in the supply pack when it's ready. And embellishments are a really fun aspect to these. Locks, I did one. I did one that has little, little white lock, so. Lots of ways to expand on this. Yep. Yes. Okay. Anything else I need to say? We're going to use a stab it um, needles. I am going to use a. Um, I'm going to use a couple of tools that aren't necessary, or you will have something to substitute at home if you don't have them, like a skewer or a pencil. Um, but at the minimum, you need the wool and the supply um, and the felting surface and the needles. Let's start. Okay. Okay. Can you see these guys? Now? Yes. See how cute they are. They are so many different little personalities there. <laughs> this one was really fun. I made the hat bigger and then let the ears poke through. So oh, nice. That was really fun. Yeah. A little scarf. Yeah, scarf. So many possibilities. I like the twisted up yarn. Kind of looks like they were trying to help and got into trouble. Well, that's what happens. Yeah. So you have a top coat bundle, some pipe cleaners, a core wool bundle. It looks like a circus in a bag. <laughs> and your top coat, all right, so there's all these colors. This makes six, which is awesome. And your top coat pieces are enough to coordinate like shoes. I usually do a different color shoe than their little outfit. So you could do like shoes and then a different gnome with this color. You can get two gnomes out of one length of top coat. It's just a little tight. So you have to plan, plan well. And then you've got three colors of core wool for the bulk of your gnomes and each one makes two. So that's six gnomes. And then in addition, um, no nude and a little bit of melon for their cheeks. So I'm thinking blue today. Does that show up okay? Yes, it's nice and vibrant. Okay, so if I use my blue, I want to go ahead and split it in half so that I know I can make two guys or dudettes. And then let's do, I have two coordinating blue colors. So the way I have it set up is for two reds to go with the red and the gold and green to go with the yellow core. Um, it's good to match your top coat at least somewhat to your core. Sort of the, the idea of core wool. So do you have a preference today, Milo? Uh, the, the brighter one shows okay. up a little better. Okie dokie. Then our shoes, let's do in, do gold. That would be cute. One green would be cute. I'll do gold. All right. So 
so. I'm going to set my fiber that I'm going to use aside and pull a pipe cleaner. And I'm going to find the center of the pipe cleaner by bringing the ends together and then working back towards the center. I'm going to twist them together very gently and evenly. You don't have to twist it tightly to four inches. And I want to leave two inches of foot. So you have an option here. It can be very hard. We usually fold the end back so that you don't have a pointy, a sharp pointy end. It can be really hard to get the fiber to cover the very end of the pipe cleaner. Like it might stick out just a little bit. I don't mind that. Um, if it does bother you, you could do a technique, and I'll show you, where you wrap out and then fold it over, and that makes sure that there's some wool on the end, but it's not gonna be as, as, as narrow and pointy. It's gonna be a little bulkier toe. So I'll show you, um, I'll show you both ways. And then I decided on gold. So when I'm working with my roving, to pull it apart, I need to have a certain amount of distance between my hands. Um, if I hold it too close together, it won't come apart. So I want to work with about a six inch piece. And I'm going to pull that off. And I'm going to split that into two. Six inches is a little bit long. I just pulled some of it off. I'm going to, I'm left handed, so I'm holding my elf in my right hand and then using my left hand to wrap away from me. So I want to think of this as a ribbon that I want to keep nice and flat and tight as I wrap out towards the toe. I also want to keep my ribbon on the narrow side. If I let it get too wide, then I lose control of where it goes and it's really hard to get it to stay on the end. So I want to keep it nice and narrow, under a half an inch, more like a quarter of an inch, so I can really target where it goes. So to make sure there's wool on the end, and notice that I keep kind of pulling it to, to narrow it to make sure it doesn't get too thick. To make sure there's wool on the end, you're going to wrap pretty much to the end and then fold that back and then keep wrapping. And that catches some fiber in the tip there. And I'm going to show you how to do it the other way on the other foot. So this little elf is going to have a little lopsided feet. And I want to go all the way back if I can. The goal is to make kind of a, a cone shape, so wider back here and getting more and more narrow. Just going to stab that a little bit to make sure everything stays put. All right, so if we want to do it the other way, we're going to fold that tip back. You got that pretty skinny on the first one still. Yeah, it's going to take another piece. Better I'm to sorry, like, I mean you got the pretty skinny. Oh, even, the toe. The yeah, toe even folding mean. it back because you kept the fiber so Because I did thin. keep it thin. I really drafted it thin, which takes a little bit of practice. If you turn the wire first, when you get towards the end, and this goes for anything that you're going to make where we're wrapping to the end of something, you want to go at an angle off the end and then right away angle back, and that locks the wool down. You can't linger with your wrapping at the end or it wants to slide off. So right here, as soon as I go this way, I want to angle back this way, nice and tight and then that just locks it down on the tip there.
rapping is like takes some practice. It's um, but it is a great way to build up your project quickly once you get the hang of it. Um, and it really doesn't take a lot of felting once you get it smooth and tight. So to build up the back of the foot, I'm going to take about a four inch piece and split it in half. And then wrap just the base out and then back. I don't go all the way to the tip because I want the tip to stay skinny. So out to about here and then turn around and that should build up the back of the foot. These are very, very stylized. <laughs> so there's not a ton of pressure for it to be, you know, any specific or perfect thing. What, what kind of bread do elves make sandwiches with? Um... make sandwiches bread. I don't know what. Shortbread. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they they like the sweets, those little elves. <laughs> okay, now we want to start building up a cone shape on our pipe cleaner. So I'm going to work with about an eight inch piece of core. I'm going to split it in half lengthwise. When you split your wool in half. It's good to make a little window and then just work it apart top and bottom. I feel like it gives you a better, smoother um, halves and more control over making the halves versus trying to pull it apart from the top. I'm going to start at the base. Just got to get it going. I'm wrapping away from myself and I'm still I'm not so worried about super skinny, but I'm still trying to be consistent and a little bit on the tight side so that I don't have to felt a lot. Wool has a lot of life and energy and it, it also, it, it wants to stick to itself. So if you wrap well, then um, it, it does that, it sticks to itself. So here I am at the end. And I'm going to do that angle back so that it stays nice and tight on the end. It's a little hard to wrap back because your, your pipe cleaner wants to wiggle around. Sorry, the air conditioner is kind of loud. It's, it's August. We're working on, working on Christmas. It's about 95 and feels yeah, like 105 out. I'm going to do it again. This time... I'm going to concentrate at the base a little bit more. The faster you travel, the thinner your wrap. The slower you travel, the more wool is going to build up. So this time, I'm not going to go quite to the tip because I want that to stay pointy. So I'll turn around about there and work my way back down. Probably need two more pieces, I'd say. Two more eight inch halves. So we're going to take approximately eight inches, split it in half, and wrap again. What are an elf's four main food groups since you mentioned how they like the sweetness? Um, candy canes, candy corn, syrup mm -hmm. and I don't remember the last one candy and candy okay okay I thought candy was the first one because he's like candy candy canes candy corn and syrup felting is my favorite I'm stabbing I'm in my shop and I'm stabbing all right one more one more I might not use this whole thing just yet I'm not going to use the whole thing. I just want the bottom to be a little bigger. That's all. So I think I'm going to stop like there. See how that has a nice cone shape. Let's 
So I'm stabbing straight in and out. I'm using a pen tool. I like to have two needles in my pen tool. If you don't have a pen tool, you're gonna use your single needle or you can hold two needles and stab, that's fine. So we're gonna stop here. He is about an inch and a plus wide at the bottom. I'm looking for my little ruler. No, I had a little Serafina ruler. Um, and I'm gonna, I wanna wrap his face, we'll wrap his face in, this is called um, Gnome Nude. This is a flesh toned core wool, same core wool as these others. And I'm gonna pull about a four inch piece. Awesome, thank you, I just want, it's so hard to see the scale on, on a video. So he's about one and a half inches wide at the base. You are also using the Mega Stab It. Yeah, so, so it's a big. Yes. Yeah. I need a place to put my foot. Oh no. I might wiggle the camera if I put my foot up here. Just a little. Okay. So we're gonna split our Gnome Nude in half. And I'm just gonna stretch it out a little bit so it's a nice, long, smooth piece and not such a chunk. And then I wanna wrap about a third of the way up for his little, where his little face is. And you can vary this, you know, some of your gnomes could be taller, some littler. Okay, I didn't use that whole piece. I didn't, didn't need it all. I have about two nice solid wraps around just to establish where the face is gonna be. Am I shaking the camera? Mm, no, but I was distracted by the loud I know. Air conditioning noise. It's we okay. traded nice it's light okay. for, <laughs> for utility noises. Someday we'll have the, the perfect the filming studio. Filming studio. When we have our painting tutorials, we're going to have Ooh. a whole like fancy setup. All right, I still have half a piece of that four inches of. Um, flesh tone core. So I want to split that in half again. And then using my Zoli tool, if you don't have a Zoli tool, you can use a pencil. I want to wrap on the round side just two, these are going to be cheeks. So I'm just going straight around, nice and skinny. I'm not crisscrossing, I'm not going traveling in any direction, just straight around. So you can, I don't know if you guys can see how zoomed Milo is. There's some vegetable matter in this core wool. Core wool often has a little bit of vegetable matter in it. It, it, it doesn't matter, no, even though it's matter. matter. Um, no matter if the it's matter. A, if it's sharp or big, I'll pull it out. But it's, you know, it's all getting sequestered in, inside. So I, I don't really, I don't worry about it too much. This, um... One of the things I like about working with wool is that it's a little just natural and gritty. Now this is, we're gonna have fun with this. Well, it's it's the butt. Well, face. let's do it this way. Yeah, we're about to make a great big butt. Okay, but <laughs> <laughs> we need let's make our shapes first. So let's take another four inch piece, split it in half lengthwise. Stretch these out. All I'm doing is just giving a gentle, gentle tug. So you can see what it does. It just changes it from four inches, a fat four inches. Oops, I just pulled a little too much, to a skinnier six. And now we're gonna make ears. And if you have a pencil, a Zoli tool is great for this. Anything that comes to a point like this, if you wrap, around the straight part and then angle up to the tapered part and then wrap around the straight part and then angle up to the tapered part. Try to, try to do it two times and that's it. I'm gonna pull the extra off. I don't need a lot of bulk. Then, when you pull it off, you can flatten it out and it just makes this nice little pointy 
here. I'll show you another tool we often use. It's a punch tool. It holds five needles and it's great for flat things. And I am going to use it also when we make the clothes. So that's one ear. Probably didn't need quite four inches in full, maybe like three. Because I do end up pulling some off. Angle up and back. I'm pulling off a lot of extra fuzz that I don't need because I have my piece nice and smooth the way I want it. I leave the bottom a little loose and fringy. I don't felt a lot here because this is what we're going to use to stick it to the base. The base, base, base. All right, we have one more face shape to make. That's a little nose. I've got um, a remnant piece. Um, it's on the thin side, maybe about three inches long. A skewer is handy here, or a toothpick. Anything that's on the skinny side. And you're doing the same thing as you did with the ear, except tiny. So just crisscrossing around and then, but instead of felting it flat, because it's on a smaller um, diameter tool, it's going to be more firm and round. And you can actually use your toothpick or skewer to keep your hands out of the way, and you're going to felt the tip back on itself. So this will be the tip of the nose, and this will be the fringy part that attaches to the face. I'm switching needles. That needle was a little strong. This one will felt without like changing the shape of the piece so much. So if I don't want to do that, I can just hold it with my fingers. You just have to be careful. All right, those are our face shapes. So we start with the cheeks. And they're going to look like a different kind of cheeks. And I've got fringe at the top and bottom, rounded, smooth on the sides. And I want to poke those in from the top and bottom to really keep the poofiness. So don't stab right down in the middle and so make it, it just all smushes flat. Your, yeah, it just smushes your piece. Now there is another face shape I will show you, and then you don't have to make them all the same. It's like option B. Okay, so now he's a little butt face, right? If you're not giggling at the butt <laughs> face, you are not having enough fun. Okay, we're gonna get worse here. It's about, it's to, about get to get worse. It probably would help if I did the ears first, but what yeah, fun would that what be? What fun would that Let's be? Let's just put his nose <laughs> on there. <laughs> you, you figure out what it looks like. And you kind of shove it in between. And I'm stabbing, can you, are you able to see? I'm stabbing the fluff down, I'm trying to turn it so you guys can see it. And so from the side, I'm almost like letting the nose kind of stick out from the cheeks. Okay, the ears, we have our fringe. They seem to curve for some reason. So you can look at them, like I usually get a straighter side and a more rounded side. It's just the way you wrap and pull it off the skewer. So I try to make them on there symmetrical. If they're real long, then just felt them down lower. Um, but you can, by where you felt them, you can adjust how long they are. It doesn't matter that this fringe goes onto the blue, like that it goes outside of the face, because he gets a shirt put on top that will actually cover cover that. I'm like trying to help people by getting angled and I just about went off my little thing here. Oh Sorry. boy. It's okay, just a little jostly. Okay. So I don't go super crazy because 
it's going to get a hat and it's going to get a shirt and all of that is going to kind of hold this stuff on even more. I can take a little bit of the melon. I'm going to give them some blush cheeks. That's pretty red, um, you know, a pretty big contrast. So I think, and this is just to show you another technique, I'm going to mix a little bit of the flesh tone in with it. So to mix, we just pull apart and restack, pull apart and restack. And then once we get this blended, you just want a small amount, real fringy, like really nondescript and fringy, so that when you felt it on, you don't get any stripes or strong um, color change. The fringe is your blender, like it's. If you were to have have it all lined up and put it on, you're going to have a really strong stripe or color change. So I try to sort of fuzz it out and then stab it in. Why did Santa's helper go to see a therapist? Oh boy, I don't know. He had low elf esteem. <laughs> Little guy. Oh my gosh. He so looks funny. a little bit like he needs to go to the doctor for other reasons. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> oh my gosh, they just like, they're just making me laugh the whole way. Okay. Now we need to make some clothes. And then I will show you before we put on the clothes. I gave this guy a little upper lip, which I think is super cute. Like it just worked with the way his clothing went on. I also made his hat sort of crooked. Whereas these guys, their clothes just come like right up. You know, it looks more like he's being swallowed by his little little outfit. When your face is finished, and I'm working on another gnome because I wanted to show this a little step that I forgot. Um, you might want to take a strip uh, about maybe four or six inches split it in half of your core wool and wrap your tummy and kind of build it back out to meet the face more. That really helps when you put the clothes on for them to come up to the cheeks and not, you know, be totally stuck um, down underneath. And you can make your gnome <laughs> as fat as you want. So if I wanted him to be even fatter, I just put more horrible. With all that candy, candy, canes, candy, corn, and mm -hmm. syrup, they can get a little pudgy. Yes. And so now, when I put the taco shape on, which you're going to see in a moment, a piece of clothing, it's coming, it's meeting up to the face a little bit better because I made, the, I brought this out more. To make the tunic, we're making a shape called a taco, and we want two two inch pieces of core wool, vertical, so I want to spread them out a little bit, I don't want, I want them to sort of become one piece, and I want that one piece to be about three inches wide, let me get my ruler and make sure I'm on point here, about three inches wide, and about two inches tall, less less all the fringe, like sort of. So whenever I give a measurement for something you're laying out, it's kind of like wherever that the wool is consistent. That's the shape I'm looking at, not this, you know, very tippy end. Just helping you get to know me and the way we do, the way we work. So then we needed to put our top coat on. And I want this to be really consistent, sort of paint stripe, like as if you were painting strokes. So if I hold it by the top and pull, I get a nice, broad, even sort of paint stroke. And again, I don't want this to be chunky strips. I want it to be all sort of coming together um, to look like a solid 
I need a little more here and a little more here. So it's kind of the wrong way for it to look would be chunked up like that. I don't want it chunked up. Okay, I'm gonna flip this over to the side like a pancake. I wanna keep the fiber going vertically. And then I wanna take a little bit of this three inches um, long, I um, you know pull the piece off and make a noodle that's gonna be this meat in my taco. And I'm gonna stab that down. I'm about, I'm towards the bottom, like to wherever all the wool is very consistent. So nowhere in this fringe, but like up where everything becomes very consistent. I'm gonna felt that down. And then I'm gonna take this and fold it up. And then that's where the taco name comes in. Now I'm kind of felting all over, not just on this edge. I'm sort of felting all over. Before I get too far, I wanna flip it over because our pretty color is on this side. And if I keep stabbing from the other side, the, um, the contrasting color is gonna poke through too much. So I wanna go this way. You know, it's funny when we do a beginner tutorial and I really try to explain like if there's, you realize how much there is to learn yeah. and, um, and why and, but once you do, I feel like all the same less like things apply to anything that you want to make. So it's really cool. Like you just expand. All right, I'm just gonna set this aside while we're in this mode and we're gonna make the hat taco as well. But just to give you an idea of how this goes, this goes like this. And then when we make the hat one, we make a triangle and it goes here. So it's like two, two pieces of, of clothing. So the hat one, I wanna pull more like kind of like an inch. I'm trying to just get sort of a consistent short amount off of here and maybe go two across and then one at the top. And what I'm looking for is to make a triangular shape. And then with my top coat, I'm gonna pull those strokes of color, maybe put three and then two up a little higher and then one. So it goes to a nice point. And that makes your triangle shape. I'm gonna give this a little stab before I flip it over just to make sure everything stays put. It's kind of a big piece to, to flip. But I have to lift it carefully now that it's a little stuck in there. And flip it over. I feel like that's just a little extra. And then same thing, I want to make a little thin noodle to put in the base of my hat. I want it to be about three inches wide because that's what's gonna go around, fit around the, the base of the hat cone. Put it towards the bottom, just where the wool is consistent again. Then flop this up. Putting the noodle in there gives it a lot of stability. If you don't put it in there, because everything's laid in the same direction, it could pull apart a little more easily. Again, I wanna flip this over before I get too far so that I can felt from this side. If at this point you see any you know, glaring holes, you can add a little more, a little more top coat. What kind of photographs do elves prefer to take? Um, uh, that's a confusing question. It is a little bit. Until you hear the answer and then it's like, oh. Elfies? Yes, elfies! <laughs> Very well done. It makes me laugh thinking about a bunch of elves taking, elves their, elves taking their elfie. It would be funny to try to photograph yeah, some of these yeah. as if they were taking yeah. the elfie. <laughs> Especially because
because they don't need have a any, really small camera. Because they don't have any hands <laughs> and a really small LP stick. So I need this to be to get pretty well felted, um, especially near the brim. All right, let's put our little piece of clothing on. I, I have mixed things about what I'm doing with the top here. You definitely don't want it super fringy, so you can just sort of fold it. But I center it on the front first. And I just get it right up in those cheeks. And then I swing it around the back. And I let one side overlap the other. So I look for which one has the most top coat on it. So I'll tack one side down and then I'll work the other side down. Back on the back of the head, I don't, I want to kind of get that flesh covered so I let the hat like cover it. You'll see when I, when I get the hat on. But what we want to try to get is that sort of triangular shape. So I really want to felt it in here and let this stay belled out. All right, I'm gonna leave that alone for now so we can see how this works. On this guy, I just felted this like a little extra super well. And then I figured out, I put it like this and then I saw where the ears were and I just cut with really sharp scissors a little hole. If you don't do that, you're letting the, um, the hat sort of press the ears down, which is also cute, just two different two different ways to go. Um, again, we want to center it on the front and I like to really bring it down as if it's a big droopy hat that's covering his eyes. I don't want it up here. It looks up. It's too tight and it looks weird. So I kind of actually swoop it down onto the cheeks and stab that in. Why do elves make such good listeners? I don't know why. They're all ears. They are all ears. That's fine. And then bring this around the back and against the cone shaped core underneath. And then I just let one side overlap the other. Oh, you know what we didn't think about yet in regards to this project is fishing line like hangers. Like I don't, I didn't put um, it on any of them. Once you get it going, you can roll it in your hands to get that nice point. But you do have to felt, um, you do have to felt the cone shape. If you if you just stab here, 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 and here, 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 it gets this little kind of like flower looking thing. Um, and I, I prefer to keep it in triangle. I think it's more elfy. If you want him to have a bent hat, like these guys, oops, then you just take your pipe cleaner and start kind of tipping it over. And then I reinforce that with more felting. You can make them look kind of like it's swept back, which is kind of cute. Um, but nothing set in stone and you certainly um, you know, can change it and decide as you go. Let me show you the little lip because it, it, sometimes they just do end up with a lot of showing here and it looks cute to put that in. So you just need a little strip of the flesh tone and you need your, um, your skewer That's or there. To the right. It's next to your Oh, there it is. Thank you. You just wrap your little strip right straight around. So you make a little seed, a little like pillow. Slide that off. And then you felt it in right under the nose in between 
the cheeks. So it's like a little upper lip. I think philtrum is the proper word. And if you really tuck it in between the cheeks, it'll look like he's smiling more. And they always smile because smiling is their favorite. Smiling is their favorite. And if you were super inspired, you could make little teeth. Little buck teeth. So I want to take my blue right up to that. I don't want there to be any question about what else is happening with his face. <laughs> yeah, just make me laugh. I think we're going to see like a lot of creativity with these. Like we did with the goldfish. Oh yeah. The goldfish had so many like colors and tail variations and you know we're just giving you the basis the little feet can get curled um, we've got we've I've done them where I've sewn bells onto the tip of the hat or the toes um, a little bling on them is nice this one I did um, you know tiny little lamb locks and made a little fuzzy fuzzy hat a scarf is nice and every once in a while we have um, we'll have a set of scarves in our clearance area on our website but in your kit will be some yarn not necessarily these colors we haven't totally figured it out yet but coordinating colors and you can pick one you can pick two Like red and gold could be cute. Green and gold, green and red. Let me try red and gold. Yeah, I like that. And then I usually start at the back. Just let that hang there until I'm ready to felt it. And then wrap, wrap up. Like I said, you can, um, You'll get creative with this, I know. So this fiber doesn't that this yarn is made with doesn't felt super great, but I should be able to at least get it stuck in there. I think that's a silk. Is this the silk or, it or might the be banana? Banana. Fiber? Might be banana. But we will include yarns. Oh, I might leave his little. Oh, yeah. Hat like that. How can I make with that a little, cute? Like a little like a bell on the top? Bell. Let me put a tiny bit of red around it just so that it stays put here. I'm just putting a little bit of wool so that everything will stay. What kind of car does an elf drive? Uh, oh my gosh, I don't know. Uh, Toyota. <laughs> this I'm going to tuck under here so I can really felt it strongly up there. <laughs> so it'll stay. There we go. So funny. And then his little nose is all going all over the place. Let me see if I can get it. A little more definitively shaped here. The more you stab up his little smile line, the more he's going to look like he's smiling. <laughs> so... Um, a clear fishing line or, you know, maybe something a little blingy like some gold. If you sew it through the hat so that he can hang on a tree. They sit on a tree pretty They can sit on a tree yeah. very well, yeah. You know, I forgot to show, sometimes after I put the ears on, I take a little fuzzy piece of the flesh tone 
and blend. And I would do this before I put the, I'm sorry, before I put the clothes on. After I put the ears on, I might blend the ear into the, into the cheek just a little bit. So there's not, you know, such a seam, a seam there. And that's it. So many color choices. So many color choices. So many embellishment choices. Um, really fun for, hopefully for the beginner. I hope I went in depth enough. And um, for the seasoned filter, just a fun, a really fun diversion to something satisfying and adorable, fun to give away, put on your Christmas presents. Um, yeah. So cute. So cute. Closing thoughts, sir? Uh, what do you call an elf walking backwards? Oh, elf walking backwards. It's really bad. Oh, we're going to close with a really yes. bad one? What? What do you call an elf one? A, a flake. A flea? It's an elf backwards. Oh, I like that. Uh, I like that's clever. Well, that's good. I think it's a good one. I said I read it as flay. <laughs> but, oh, yeah, flay. Flay. <laughs> I call it a flay. So, we hope that you enjoy this project and that you will share your creations in our group on Facebook. It's called Serafina Felting Fanfare. And our business page is Serafina Fiber Art on Facebook. And that is where we post the Fiber Fairy giveaway, which is so important. And you can learn about that on our website. We have lots of tutorials on our website. Um, and have fun. Happy felting. Happy elfing. Yep. Bye.